Welcome to our channel. We are the Millers. I'm Amanda and this is my husband Steven. Hey. And we are just getting started on YouTube and I know a lot of you guys don't really know us and don't know our family history and how we all came together. So we wanted to kind of share our story with you guys and let you get to know us a little bit better. We met in high school. Mm -hmm. We were high school sweethearts. I was a senior, she was a sophomore. Mm -hmm. I went into the cafeteria one day and I saw her across the room and I was like, oh my goodness gracious. And uh, <laughs> so I asked a friend of mine, hey, who is that? And and he was like, oh, that's Amanda, she's awesome. And I was like, sweet, I'm gonna go meet her. <laughs> so I went up to her, sat down next to her, and said, hey, I'm Steven. I just and like that uh, too, I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and so we started dating, prom was our first date, and uh, fast forward a little bit, we got married pretty much as soon as she graduated high school, mm -hmm. so. So we didn't necessarily plan on starting a family immediately, um, but God had other plans. We were so young and not prepared <laughs> in any way. <laughs> that's um, for sure. But we knew that this little baby was a blessing from God, and so we joyfully welcomed her into our lives. And it put us on the path to parenthood, and we, um, looking back, it, it was a very joyful time in our lives in so many ways. She, yeah. She's such a beautiful, uh, joyful child, and um, that's our daughter, our first daughter, Reese. She's 14 years old. So and full of life and just... Amazing, such a beautiful soul, and... Um, just has such a special place in our hearts and uh, she's musically gifted like Steven. She takes after him in that and just very mature for her age, very responsible, yeah. um, so witty and so funny. Witty. She keeps us laughing <laughs> nonstop. A couple years later, we welcomed our second daughter, Kira, who's 12 now. Mm -hmm. And she is just like our total social butterfly, <laughs> so outgoing, so entrepreneurial, so creative. She's got an easel in her room. She's mm -hmm. painting. She wants to bake. She wants to start a business, start a, a bakery. <laughs> uh, she, she's so musical. She's always singing at the top mm -hmm. of her lungs, which I love. She's yeah, amazing. she has such a big, bold personality. So bubbly. And oh uh, yeah, it's such a joy. So when our girls were seven and five, we decided to look into the possibility of um, foster care or adoption for our family and we actually went through the foster care training here in Texas and then immediately took a job out of state and so mm -hmm. we either needed to redo all of that training for the state of Missouri or just go ahead and adopt and so we were praying about it and talking to a lot of different people calling agencies and asking questions and really everything just seemed to be pointing towards Ethiopia mm -hmm. and so we um, put our application in for a specific agency and we knew that we wanted to adopt from the waiting child list, which um, waiting children are considered harder to place. So like sibling groups, older children, kids with special needs, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, we really had a heart for kids who were already waiting for a family. Um, and so we started that process and immediately, I mean, within a few weeks, I think, saw yeah. um, our boy's profile on the waiting child list. And so we um, really, strongly felt like we were supposed to adopt them and it was a pretty quick process for us um, I think less than a year start to finish before we were in Ethiopia getting our boys mm -hmm. and um, That was such an amazing time for us because we fell in love with our boys um, yeah. and, and Ethiopia in general, I mean just yeah. it's such a beautiful country and beautiful culture and the people the coffee oh, yeah, Everything it was just amazing. amazing and so we really enjoyed having a few weeks in Ethiopia with our boys getting to know them and We plan to go back someday um, when they're a little bit older um, we're already talking about taking trips back with them and and we love to watch the videos of our time there. And the boys remember a little bit because they were three and five when we mm -hmm. adopted them. So our older son, Jude, especially, will remember some of that. And we have such sweet conversations just talking about 
those first you know few days and weeks meeting them you know there were so many firsts for them um, even though they were three and five because <laughs> they had spent such a considerable amount of time in an orphanage and mm -hmm. so when we brought them home they were such curious and excited little boys like and baths were like yes water parks yeah i don't think they had actually had a <laughs> bath in a traditional bathtub until we brought them to our hotel and they were actually very afraid to get in at first but we showed them the bubbles and then they were, were making able to... santa claus beer yes and... and it was hours and hours in the bathtub after that <laughs> it was so sweet um and even on the plane ride home we recognized that they didn't know what ice was um and when we got into the states they were given a little cup of apple juice with ice in it and we were watching our boys, they were staring at their cups and you could tell they were <laughs> curious about something. We're like thinking, what is so interesting about that. this cup of apple juice with ice in it? And after a minute, he sticks his hand in the cup and he's like pulling out the ice <laughs> and then he recognizes that it's cold and he's like, <laughs> like freaking out and we realized oh my goodness this child does not know what ice is um and there were so many funny and sweet moments like that just getting to know our boys and yeah. um it was such an exciting and joyful time for us so we named our oldest son jude seraphil and seraphil is his ethiopian name and it comes from the word seraph or angel and he is easily the most compliant and easygoing kid yeah that it kind of sums known. him up like yeah. his name fits him. <laughs> yeah, very much so. And he's also one of the most compassionate kids that I've ever known, or compassionate people in general. Um, we saw that from the very beginning mm -hmm. and just how he would take care of his little brother and um, was just so kind and so easygoing. And one of my favorite memories of him when we met him, um, we were in our hotel room getting ready to go to dinner one night and um, Stephen had put a handful of change on the counter and he yeah. was looking at it. He was very curious and Stephen saw that he was really curious and so he went over and he picked up that change and put it in Jude's hand and he said, you, do you want to hold this? This can be yours. And Jude was beaming. You could tell he was so proud. He put it in his pocket and you know, he had money that was his and um, he was just, he was so excited. Um, and then we got in the van to go to the restaurant. And it's really common in Ethiopia when you're stopped at a light for people to start knocking on your windows and begging mm -hmm. for money. Um, there's so much poverty there. And so as we're stopped at this light, our van is like surrounded by children mm -hmm. and women with babies on their backs, yeah. knocking and begging for money or food. And Jude was sitting on Stephen's lap and he looks out the window at this woman with a baby on her back and he looks at me makes eye contact with me and then he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out the change that Stephen had gotten him and he pushed open the window to the van and he handed it to the woman and said something in Amharic which is his native tongue and then he looked back at us and just laid his head on Stephen's shoulder and right then and there we knew there is something so remarkable about yeah. this child and we've seen it every day since that we just sometimes sit around and wonder, you know, what is this kid going to be when he grows up? Because he is such a remarkable person and so kind hearted and compassionate. And I just know that God has such big plans for him and for his future. Liam Esriel is our 10 year old mm -hmm. and uh, Ezreal comes from Israel. Uh, but he is a leader, man. He is a yeah. fighter. Uh, he knows exactly what he wants. Uh, very competitive, yeah. <laughs> um, just, just like a little glimpse into his personality. Uh, his body doesn't create, it doesn't produce a specific growth hormone that he needs to grow the way he's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And so his endocrinologist has him on a specific shot of growth hormones every day. Mm -hmm. And so Liam just kind of loads it up, and just, I'm not throwing away my shot. And just <laughs> gives himself his own shot every day. He's fearless, he uh, really fearless. is. Fearless. He's like, he's like Samuel L. Jackson in that the new King Kong movie where he's like looking up at that hundred some odd foot monster and just like, yo, you and me, let's do this. Like mm -hmm. he's fearless, he's strong. He loves uh, being able to, to lead out and show yeah. that he's capable yeah. um, and it's awesome. Yeah, and if there's ever like a spider or something nasty in the house, I call Liam and he just is so like happy to take care of it <laughs> for me. I got this. Yeah.
And he's also <laughs> a really good big brother because yeah. mm -hmm. um, he was the youngest for a couple of years in our family. And when we told him he was gonna be a big brother, he was so, so excited, I think, to have um, little ones underneath him that he could take care of and that he could maybe boss around a little bit. Um, but he is, he's such a sweet big brother and um, yeah. yeah, just a really sweet kid. I think he's gonna be a CEO someday, probably. Probably so, I, I would think so. Something to that effect. So a couple of years after we bring our boys home from Ethiopia, life is good, things are going really well, and we decide to um, try for one more baby. And when she comes up to me, she's like, hey, is it crazy that I want another one? And I was like, <laughs> no, you're a freaking awesome mom. Like, of course, let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we thought it would be a pretty easy process because it was a very easy process for us to have both of our girls. Um, and that was not the case this time. I started having um, so many different health issues that we just couldn't pinpoint. I was going mm. to doctor after doctor and just couldn't get a diagnosis and I felt like my body was slowly shutting down on me. Um, I was so exhausted all the time. Um, anxiety, depression, getting sick easily, um, starting to have tons and tons of dental issues when I had never had any dental issues before and we just couldn't figure out what was going on. And then I ended up having a couple of miscarriages as well. Um, <laughs> and actually one was right the, the night before his birthday and I, I spent that the day of his birthday in bed crying. I just couldn't even function. It was um, a really heartbreaking time for us. And the second um, one was Christmas. The second one was over Christmas break as well. And so that year was a hard year for our family. Yeah, we call um, it the year from hell. <laughs> yeah, we did um, because we just, we were seeking for answers and just crying out to the Lord and just couldn't um, couldn't understand what, why this was happening and why we were going through this. I ended up going to a holistic doctor at the beginning of 2013 and I remember sitting in her office and just crying and telling her all of the things that we've been going through and all of my health issues and just basically asking her, what's wrong with me? And she was able to pinpoint in that first meeting what was going on, which was incredible. Um, I have a condition called MTHFR, um, which is where your body doesn't properly absorb B vitamins. And especially over time as you age or if you've had a couple of babies, your body is really depleted of B vitamins. And so you see issues like miscarriages, um, depression, anxiety, chronic fatigue. Um, and so that was really amazing that I was able to get those answers. And in that meeting, she also said, I think you also might be pregnant right now, so <laughs> take these B vitamins that I could, you know, my body could absorb properly and go home and take a pregnancy test, mm -hmm. which was really terrifying for me because I had had several miscarriages and so I had just been diagnosed with this new thing. I didn't know how that would affect it. And so um, I went home and I took my B vitamins and then I, I took a pregnancy test and it was positive. And yeah. that is our Ethan. Um, we call him Hurricane Ethan. He's four <laughs> years old and he is so mischievous and yeah. so into everything. Um, but like the sweetest kid. The sweetest the kid and so like Snuggly. affectionate. Yeah. He's always the first one up in the mornings and he comes and climbs in bed with me and just snuggles and hugs me and oh, he's such a sweet little boy, which is really good for him because he's always <laughs> in the trouble as well. He's always destroying everything around him, mm -hmm. so it's like... On accident, <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of my favorite stories about him, I, I can laugh at it now, but it wasn't that no. funny at the time. Um, you know, Stephen had bought me my favorite pint of ice cream, um, Haagen-Dazs, dark chocolate ice cream. And one afternoon I went and I opened the freezer and I realized it was not in the freezer. And I'm looking around, I'm thinking, I know I didn't eat that ice cream. Where did it go? And it wasn't until a couple of hours later, right before Stephen walked <laughs> in the door, um, I hear that the dryer is going <laughs> and I had not been doing laundry. And so I was like, what is going on here? So I go into the laundry room and the dryer is brown from the inside. <laughs> and I open it up and he had been drying mm. my chocolate ice cream <sighs> for a couple of hours, honestly. Stephen walked in as <laughs> I opened that door and I was like, on the verge of tears and you didn't even, I don't think I even said anything. You you just said, I'll clean it up. Cause I was like, <laughs> so I was just about to cry. Oh my goodness. Um, but he, and he didn't mean anything about, he just was curious like what, what will happen like? if I put ice cream in the dryer, you know, and that is just how his little mind works. Um, he's actually mellowed quite a bit as he's yeah. gotten a little older. He'll be turning five this, um, this October. 
which is crazy because I still think of him as like a little toddler, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's grown up quickly. A couple years ago, Ethan's three. Mm -hmm. We really start asking the question, like, hey, are we done? Like, mm -hmm. do we, we've got room in our house, we've got room in our hearts, we've even got room for one more in our car, like, what do we want to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just started really praying about it. Um, and I think that we knew when we adopted the boys, we knew we would adopt again someday. Mm -hmm. And because when you go and see the need, yeah. it really does something in your heart. And so we had been talking about that as a possibility for our yeah. family again for quite a while. And so um, we were talking to various friends and really just felt drawn towards China. We knew we wanted our family to um, be diverse and reflect God's love for all people. And so we decided to move forward with the China Adoption Program. Yeah. It was also one of the few adoption programs that um, allow families with um, five children at the time yeah. um, to adopt. And so um, we were looking at the special needs program. Um, we were really educating ourselves on what it would look like for our family to adopt an older child or special yeah. needs child. And so doing a lot of research and a lot of prayer. And um, we put in our application with an agency and um, we saw Penelope um, on the waiting child list and... And it's like we, we, the moment you see her picture, we were just like, that's, yeah. that's her, that's our daughter. You, you know? just really can't explain it. I don't know how it happens, but God just really confirmed it in our hearts that we were yeah. supposed to adopt this precious little girl. Mm -hmm. And um, she's 12 years old and we actually met her on her 12th birthday. Yeah, and, um, in person in person and it was really incredible. She is a very driven and strong-willed girl and she knows how to take care of herself, yeah. um, which is um, a really good thing for a child who's grown up without parents, you know, to be able to protect yourself. And so I think she's gonna be a lawyer or something when she grows up because <laughs> she, she knows how to get things done. Yeah. And um, she actually gave us a contract when we met her. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll, there's a lot of fear that goes into older child adoption. Mm -hmm. And um, so many unknowns. These kids, they know that yeah. they're leaving everything behind and um, choosing to join a new family. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you are over the age of 10 in China, you have to sign that you want to be adopted. And so yeah. we had been Skyping with Penelope and letting her get to know us. Um, our agency had been setting that up. And so that was going really well. And I felt like that was breaking down a lot of barriers and just the fear of the unknown. Getting to show um, her around the house, show her her bedroom, show her uh -huh. bed, show her the bike we got her. Like yeah, all that stuff like that. yeah. I thought I think that was really really good. Um, but I think there is still so much fear because uh, you really are leaving everything behind and mm -hmm. um, choosing to you know take that leap of faith and join a new family. Yeah. And so. Um, yeah, when we met her, she had a contract for us that we would <laughs> not cut her off from talking to people back in China and that um, she would be able to Skype with some of them, um, foster family and friends occasionally, and that we would promise to someday take her back to China. And we had already been talking about those things, that we wanted to do that for her and help her to be connected to yeah. um, her culture and retain her original language of Mandarin. And, um, you know, she spent her first 12 years in China. And so that's something we really wanted to be careful to honor. Mm -hmm. And so um, she's been home almost a year now and we um, have already started talking about taking her back in the next year or so. And um, I think it's gonna be really, really special because we didn't get to see her hometown. Uh, we met her in the capital of her province. That's where you yeah. go and you meet um, the children you're going to adopt. And so we didn't get to see her hometown or her school. And she wanted to show us around and, and let us see everything. And so... Let us meet all her friends. Yeah. And, and she's bonded so well at this point. And so yeah. I think it's really an exciting time for us because we're able to start talking about going back and mm -hmm. meeting friends of hers and seeing her school and where she grew up and her foster mother, we talk with her occasionally um, online and she is really excited to welcome us there and wants to host us and make this huge elaborate meal. And yeah. so it's Apparently really- Apparently she's a really good cook. Yes, it's so really I've cool to pictures. see how the families are knitted together and mm -hmm. just this um, just this connection and this love that is there. It's, it's really beautiful and our um, our and it's girls, really fun to see her personality mm -hmm. really coming out more and more. Like she's- yeah. 
She's really smart and really funny. Yeah. And anytime we see her get in a room with people who speak Mandarin, whoever she's talking to is just constantly rolling on the floor laughing yeah. because yeah. she's a joker, man. And she it's is. really fun to watch her interact with people. Mm -hmm. And she's very close with our girls. And our girls had such a great time in China because we took our whole family. If you haven't seen our adoption video, we have that up and you can watch that. Um, but our girls, especially, they want, and they're gonna come back with us as well mm -hmm. when we go see her foster family um, and where she grew yeah. up in China. And they have talked about, you know, wanting to live in China someday because they think it's so incredible and had such an amazing time when we were there. Yeah. And so it's funny, at night sometimes we're tucking the girls in bed and they'll be talking about, you know, when we grow up, maybe sometimes, we, you know, we'll live in China half of the year and <laughs> America half of the year. And it's just so, so interesting to see um, just how, close they are and how bonded they are and um and kira can actually sing in chinese so maybe that'll mm -hmm. play into it somehow yeah yeah Penelope's i mean teaching. she's learning a lot of chinese songs. she's yeah she's teaching us and it's really just so so sweet but we didn't adopt just one kid from china mm -hmm. if you've seen our adoption video you know that we adopted two kids mm -hmm. uh, on a case-by-case -case basis china will allow some families to adopt two children concurrently and so after really praying about it uh, we felt like if both our agency and China approved us to bring home two kids, that that would pretty much be the sign that we needed. Yeah. And so we got that approval a couple months after we applied and um, were really overjoyed. And we saw Lincoln's profile with our agency for special needs children. Um, he had a stroke as a baby. And so um, we were really educating ourselves on his special need. He has left side hemiplegia, which means, um, so the right side of his brain was where the stroke happened, and so the left side of his body is weaker. Mm -hmm. So um, he's in physical therapy, occupational therapy, and he'll be um, doing speech therapy as well. Um, but what we didn't know is uh, we, we had an MRI done for him a couple of months ago just to see a closer um, you know, image of his brain and the damage that had been done by the stroke. And he was diagnosed with a condition called Moya Moya, which is a really rare uh, brain disease where your blood vessels don't give um, adequate blood supply to your brain. Mm -hmm. And that is why he had the stroke. Yeah. And actually it was one large stroke and a couple of smaller strokes on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so we have been talking with um, a surgeon here actually in California that is the best of the best. Yeah. Um, there's only a couple of doctors in the country that really perform this surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone that we've talked to has said, you need to see this doctor in California. Yeah. And so we are actually preparing for brain surgery for Lincoln um, in the next couple of months. I think in mid-September is the date that they just gave us. And so... Um, We're really hopeful for him because yeah. you know, he is just such a warrior. Like He really is. All his doctors have been amazed mm -hmm. given the condition of his brain, how much he's been able to develop, how far along he really is. He's just mm -hmm. the most joyful, happy kid. He's got a contagious laugh that just oh, makes so every, oh, you just want to squeeze him. I mean, those cheeks. The cheeks. <laughs> and we know. always squeeze his cheeks. All we of do, his siblings are always. We squeeze his cheeks a little bit. And he's, he hates it, but <laughs> we're trying not to do it too much. But, um, but yeah, we are so hopeful for him. And the, the surgery actually is um, really provides a lot of hope for his future because if yeah. the surgery is successful, which with this doctor it almost always is, mm -hmm. um, he will have no real um, restraints on his future. They said that yeah. he should be able to develop normally. Um, you know, most kids with his condition, they learn to walk, they learn to talk. Um, mm -hmm. all the things that typical kids do just at a little bit of a later yeah. timeline. And so instead of, you know, walking at one year old, it might be three or four or five. Yeah. Um, and so that's part of the reason why we're doing physical therapy because that can really help him in a lot of ways. But, um, we are so hopeful for him and just mm -hmm. so thankful for him and thankful that he's a part of our family. He is such a blessing and such a joy. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like at this point, you know, a lot of people ask us, are you done? Are you gonna adopt again? And we don't have any plans to grow our family <laughs> at this point. I think our hands are pretty full. Yeah. Um, you know, seven kids is a lot and um, medical issues that we're yeah. working through and all of that. Um, but we don't ever wanna say never because you know we wanna leave, leave room for the Lord to do something if he would have us do it. Um, but at this point, we don't have any current plans to adopt again. 
Um, but just so thankful for each of our kiddos. They're just all of them beautiful, wonderful yeah. kids. And um, I They're just, pretty amazing. yeah, I, I'm just so thankful for the family that God's given us. <laughs> So that is our family story and how we really came to be. Well, it's a lot. It is a lot. Um, but you know, we so get a lot of questions about our family and like the diversity of our family. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was really intentional on our part yeah. because we do want our family to be a visual representation of God's love for all people and all cultures. Mm -hmm. And so we feel very, very blessed to be able to celebrate multiple cultures in our home yeah. um, and to be able to keep our kids connected to their culture and eventually take them back to Ethiopia and China. Um, we feel very blessed to be able to celebrate with them. Yeah. And um, so we are new to YouTube here <laughs> and definitely still amateurs, but we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> That's for sure. And so thank you for following along with us. Um, we'd love it if you would subscribe and keep watching yeah. and um, are just so thankful that you are following along. So. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.